hello dear friends and today let's uh, read about bcg vaccine okay this is one of the oldest vaccine to be introduced and this is highly likely to come for your exams either as your long essay or short essay so it is one of the most important question that can be asked from this immunization topic so let's go through this topic okay well, what does bcg stand for bacil calmed curin okay b c g let's talk about introduction small introduction so this vaccine was introduced long back in 1921 initially it was given as oral vaccine from 1921 to 25 and later on in 1927 it was first administered as intradermal and that is being followed at present okay then what is the need for this vaccination because of the high incidence of tb tb in the underdeveloped as well as developed nation so in 2016 there were about 10 million people who developed tb of this 1 million were children okay and of that 10% were hiv positive okay and there was high incidence of mdr as well as xdr tb okay this was somewhere around 22 22% and among that 6% turned out to be xdr tb okay so that is the need okay that is the need next let's know something about the vaccine so what is the type of vaccine it is a live attenuated vaccine okay this we have already read in up to us class then what bacteria is used it is not actually mycobacterium tuberculosis but it is the mycobacterium bovis that is being used and what is the strain two strains are actually being used one is the pasteur strain and the other one is the copenhagen strain or the danish 1331 strain okay currently this is being used in india danish 1331 and it is freeze dried why is it freeze dried because it is heat sensitive and why it is stored in an amber colored bottle because it is sensitive to uv rays or light okay so and once we uh, it has to be on as already read it has to be reconstituted in normal saline next how it is stored it is stored in the lyophilized form it can be stored between 2 to 8 degrees celsius for up to 12 months without losing any potency so it can be stored in 2 to 8 degrees celsius for up to 12 months next coming to the dosage if it is less than 4 weeks or greater than 4 weeks if it is less than 4 weeks then we give 0.05 ml okay and how much what amount of bacilli it contains 0.1 to 0.4 million live attenuated bacilli if it is greater then we give 0.1 ml okay if it is greater than 4 weeks then we give 0.1 ml if it is less than 4 weeks 0.05 ml next let's see how do we administer this vaccine this vaccine is administered as intradermal dose okay intradermally we administer and once we administer what should we look for mainly we look for a wheel for up to 5 mm to be raised up to a 5 mm wheel has to be raised once we have administered the intradermal vaccine only then it indicates that the vaccination has been given appropriately how do we use we give using a tuberculin syringe 26 gauge tuberculin syringe and once the vaccine has been reconstituted with normal saline it has to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees celsius and protected from light and it has to be used within 4 to 6 hours of reconstitution why because it doesn't have any preservative so there is highly likely of bacterial contamination to be taken place after 4 to 6 hours okay so it has to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees celsius protected from light and to be used within 4 to 6 hours of reconstitution okay and what is the site that is given it is uniformly given all over india at left upper arm at the insertion of deltoid okay to maintain uniformity next what is the phenomena after vaccination so examiners are very fond of this question so this is very important to know okay so once we vaccine what happens initially as already mentioned a 5 mm wheel is raised that is something that happens immediately then after 2 to 3 weeks a papule develops okay a papule develops after 2 to 3 weeks and this very papule increases in size up to 4 to 8 mm by the end of 5 to 6 weeks okay after this what happens that papule the ulceration of that papule will take place followed by healing and this leaves a scar this happens by 6 to 12 weeks okay so this is the phenomenon that takes place after vaccination and usually like 
a patient comes to you a 6 month old kid comes to you the mother doesn't know if the child is vaccinated with bcg or not and the mother has not carried thai card with her then how do you go about seeing whether the the child is vaccinated for bcg or not we usually go and look at the scar now there might arise a situation wherein there is no scarring that time what do we think we most like the times end up thinking that the child is not immunized but that might not be the condition because up to 10% of the children up to 10% of the children who are vaccinated might not have scarring as well so it is important to confirm okay then age group that is administered so what is the basic aim is to vaccinate the child as early as possible because the efficacy of the vaccine or the immunogenicity of the vaccine is much better when it is given before the community exposure of the child takes place to the tb bacilli so when does the when in a country like india where tb is where most of the people are infected with tb bacilli though they are not having active disease it is only possible to do this at birth so that is what who recommends okay so a single dose of bcg vaccine to be given to all healthy neonates at birth okay for prevention of tb as well as leprosy if we are not able to give at birth for if the child might have had an nicu stay so if it is not able to be if we cannot give it at birth then it has to be given at the earliest opportunity thereafter so this is a change from the previous guidelines because previous guidelines say that you we can go ahead and vaccinate the child when it comes for next vaccination at 6 weeks but that is not the present status it has been changed now it is because the immunogenicity is better if it is given before the community exposure we like to give it at the earliest opportunity thereafter and should not be delay okay next according to our national immunization schedule and iap schedule it is given bcg is given at birth okay <coughs> next what about the older age groups is there any upper limit for this vaccination like previously there was an upper catch up could have been given only up to 5 years if that is the present recommendation no the present guideline says if the tuberculin sensitivity test is negative in the unvaccinated group then bcg can provide long term protection okay so if tst is negative in the unvaccinated group if bcg is given it can provide long term protection so since we know this the guidelines has been changed now so an unvaccinated child or an adolescent or adults with tst and ingra negative status then what do we go ahead and do if they are in high incidence if they are in, in an area where there is high incidence of tb and leprosy then we go ahead and vaccinate them or if this three group of people are moving from a low incidence area to high incidence area if they are moving from a developed to an underdeveloped nation then again please go ahead and give the vaccination or if they are at high risk of exposure occupational exposure like health workers then again please vaccinate them okay next let's see what is the protective value of this vaccine so what do we what does this bcg vaccine protect us against it protects us against one is tuberculosis second is it protects us against leprosy correct among tuberculosis again it protects us against pulmonary tb and extra pulmonary tb in extra pulmonary tb what we are mainly concerned we are concerned of the serious forms that can be meningeal tb or the miliary tb in pulmonary tb various studies have shown that there can be up to 80% okay so the maximum is 82% up to 82% efficacy is present this is the protective value there are various studies giving various range but this is the maximum that is up to 82% then um, uh, when it comes to serious forms of tb like meningeal tb or miliary tb it is up to 77% in asian population and it is also shown to decrease the death it is also shown to decrease the death okay so just a second now let's see something about and yeah maximum efficacy when given in neonatal period 
before community exposure as already mentioned and what is the duration of protection it can offer again to the max is up to 15 years post vaccination for this also there are various studies and maximum is up to 15 years okay now let's look at adverse effect following immunization so one that can be local second is systematic systemic okay when it comes to local depending on the depth of insertion if there is inadvertent insertion or injection given then there can be severe ulceration or there can be injection site abscess or there can be separative lymphadenitis this itself is a topic that can be dealed in detail it, it this itself can come as a five marker so some other time we'll look at it okay and it can come with these are the three local complications okay then what can be the systemic complication one is disseminated bcg disease this has carries uh, high case fatality rates and it is usually more common in immunocompromised children okay and other complications can be osteitis osteomyelitis immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome in hiv children uveitis can take place or lupus vulgaris can take place so various complications are present what are the contraindications if the child has any allergic reactions to any of the components of the vaccine prepared or in immunocompromised state okay next let's look at vaccination in special population okay in among special groups how do we vaccinate if the lady is pregnant and that lady is going from a low incident country to high incidence country in do we vaccinate in when it comes to pregnancy still the studies have not shown if you still there are not many studies that is done to have shown safety profile in pregnancy so at present it is not recommended next let's see in lactating mothers it can be given okay now when it comes to hiv if the child is having hiv all these situations can arise okay if we know that the child is having hiv so the child is having hiv positive status then do we vaccinate only if the child is clinically well immunologically stable and cd4 counts are greater than 25 percent for children aged above five years we can go ahead and give the vaccination so in hiv positive children this is the condition if they have to be vaccinated now let's see neonates so a child is born and we don't know the hiv status of the mother that time what do we do we go ahead and administer the vaccine risk versus benefit ratio if we weigh then it is better to go ahead and give the vaccine now there is another situation where the child is born to a hiv positive mother we know the status of the mother now if the child has no clinical evidence of hiv suggest no clinical evidence suggestive of hiv then we go ahead again and give bcg okay regardless of whether the mother is taking art or not okay then if it is a young unvaccinated children traveling from high incidence tb countries traveling to high incidence tb countries please go ahead and vaccinate the child okay next if the neonate is born to a child with uh, sorry if the neonate is born to a mother with pulmonary tb then what do we do we initially give our preventive therapy to the child for six months then we check the child for tb as well as hiv if both the status are negative if both the status are negative then we go ahead and give bcg okay then finally coming to if it is preterm infants or low birth weight infants if they are healthy and between 32 to 36 weeks period of gestation then again we can go ahead and give the vaccination so i think so all aspects of bcg is covered and yeah i think so this much will be more than enough for your exams okay so thank you guys